making school buildings safer. It was a priority for lawmakers after the school shooting in Parkland and again after the Santa Fe High School shooting. Governor Abbott announced a plan addressing largely unprotected portable classrooms found at hundreds of local campuses. But months later, there is little to show for increased security. Channel 2 investigator Mario Diaz checked dozens of campuses. Tonight, he's revealing a safer alternative and pushing state leaders to explain what happened to the money set aside for school security. The school shooting in a suburb of Denver, Colorado. And what's the location of the emergency? Maybe go to school. I think there's somebody shooting in here. Possible shot fired at Summer Douglas High School. I have the gunshot victim. Yes, yes, a lot of blood. Please help, please. Few places in this world are darker than the images and calls for help from a child facing a school shooter. She's afraid to talk. They're hiding right now. I'm very sorry, Miss Hart, but your daughter's been a victim of gun violence. She was shot. And uh, there you go. Your world just gets split open. Rhonda Hart's life was fractured last May when her daughter Kimberly was murdered inside Santa Fe High School. It was terrible. <laughs> that was the worst day ever. I've investigated lots of acts of terror in small, confined spaces. Fred Burton with the Austin-based intelligence company Stratfor says an active shooter inside of a school is a situation like no other. It poses a very unique protective security and protective intelligence threat. Burton met with Channel 2 Investigates to address a school security flaw we've been examining for months. What would you do if you had an active shooter in a portable building? God forbid, what if? These are the kinds of rough questions that parents don't like to ask, teachers don't like to ask, school administrators don't like to ask, politicians don't want to talk about. Channel 2 Investigates examined multiple school campuses with portable classrooms. The sole protection for most, a simple fence. Access to many of these portable classrooms could be had in less than a minute. Or in the case of these, mere seconds. Anyone wanting to do harm can get to that portable building on two sides, maybe without even being detected. Chris Tritico represents multiple teachers unions in the area. He has concerns for children and teachers trapped in portable classrooms. They are definitely exposed to harm. We identified 1,647 portable classrooms currently in use by seven area school districts. Robin Cummings with Vanguard Modular says these buildings are vulnerable. Right, right. You can tell that you yeah. fire a bullet, right. it'll penetrate right through. Right. It. It's not designed to be bulletproof. Vanguard Modular is trying to get ahead of it. They build portable classrooms with enhanced security features, including bulletproof glass. However, there is one big problem. We're offering the services, but unfortunately the money's not there to, to capitalize on it. They just Do you expect that money to be there someday? It's a great question. I, it's, it, I'm not even seeing a hint of it coming. We need to do more than just pray for the victims and their families. Governor Greg Abbott has called for action two times this year. Following February's school massacre in Parkland, Florida, he asked the Texas Education Agency to address school safety. One recommendation? Include provisions for increasing the safety of portable buildings. We asked the governor's office to tell us what came of that idea. We have not heard back. Security doesn't come cheap, and it doesn't come from anywhere. You have to have funds to do it. After Santa Fe, another action plan proposed by the governor. This one came with a price tag of $110 million. The 42-page report highlighted the hardening of schools, calling them soft targets. However, unlike February's two-page letter following Parkland, the second report never mentioned portable classrooms. Burton says securing every classroom will take commitment from parents, school districts, and most importantly, Austin. It's going to take a lot of hard questions being asked, like you are, as to what do we do about this threat until it happens. The governor's action plan has a number of safety initiatives listed. Total price tag, $100. 10 million dollars with 70 million of that already available or will soon become available and in 2019 the governor plans to work with the legislature to secure an additional 30 million dollars now bill and dominique the governor was unavailable to accommodate us for an interview however we do plan to follow up with him mm -hmm. in the near future as for this report we have put it up on in the investigates section of click2houston.com a lot of people will read that mario yep. i'm sure thank you